Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I've created and painted this on the iPad, break it down into easy to follow steps, much easier than you might imagine, so that you can follow along and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this tutorial down, this painting down into easy to follow steps, and I am using the app Procreate on the iPad, but even if you've got a different tablet or a different app, I think you should be able to follow some of the basic components and follow along. But within Procreate, I've opened an A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And the color profile I'm gonna be using is in the list within Procreate by default, and that is the sRGB, and it's the code that ends in 2.1. In terms of the brushes, I'm only gonna use the brushes that come free within the app itself. So within airbrushing, I'm gonna use the soft brush, the medium brush, and possibly the hard brush too. Within inking, I'm going to use the studio pen. Might within artistic use the leatherwood brush. And within organic, I'm going to use the rainforest brush. I've already pre-selected a color palette and each of the colors that I'm gonna be using within the app has a code called a hexadecimal code. You go to the colors, the value section, and you can type the codes into this box one at a time, press enter. The color will appear up here, and then you can tap it into your own color palette. And all of those codes are down in the video description. But also next to the code is a link that takes you to my Patreon page, and you can download the whole color file for free to save you some time. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the second color on the top row, and I'm going to drag it from the circle into the canvas, let go, and it flood fills the whole canvas. I'm going to stay on the same layer, I'm going to go to my airbrushing soft brush and I'm going to choose the first color on the top row. I'm going to put the brush size down to about 30% and I'm just going to do a line across the top and have it slightly arched like that. So it's just a little bit thinner in the middle. And then I'm going to go to the adjustments up here, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur it in to about 80%. That will do. Then I'm going to create a new layer, layer two, go back to my colors, and I'm going to choose the third color on the top row. I'm going to stay on the soft brush and airbrushing. I'm going to have the size still at 30% and 100% opacity, and just a little bit underneath halfway. I'm going to do a band of this light color. Then I'm going to go back to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that in to about the 70 looks about right, deselect. So that's created a nice gradient. We know where the horizon line is roughly gonna be and we've got a really nice dark blue creeping in at the top of the canvas. I will create another layer just to keep it separate and I'm gonna switch brushes this time to the organic rainforest brush. Now I'm gonna reset it and I'm gonna show you how I'm going to actually amend it. So I'm gonna tap on the brush and the spacing by default will be on 27%. I'm going to put it up to about the 50%. And I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to skip a few colors. I'm going to use this lightest color here, which is second in from the right. I'm going to put the brush size about 5%. And I'm not going to quite have it at 100%. I'm going to put it at around 70. Now, the horizon line is going to be around here. So just a hint above that, we're just going to add some cloud. I'm going to add pressure and release pressure as I go along, and it increases the size when I press harder and decreases it when I let go too. So I might just do another few more at the side, pressing on a bit more like this. So that creates a really nice set of distant clouds, and I'm just going to blur them in slightly. So the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur them in just a hint. So about 4% looks good. You really are just a soft detail in the distance at that point. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to stay on the rainforest brush, but I'm going to switch back from the white back of color. So it's the third from the right on the top row. I need to put the brush size up quite significantly. Let's try the 20%. And I'm just going to do a couple of these shapes higher up. Now, if you don't like the way that it lands and don't stick with the the first impression that it gives you. Just find something that you think works 
On that layer, I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. Again, just blur it in, this time to about 6%. And that's the, the kind of darkest base note for the more closer to clouds. I'll keep the highlights on a separate layer, just in case we need to blur it in a little bit. And we're going to go back to the white, which is the second from the right. And we we'll probably need to change now back to the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to turn that down so I can control it. About 3% size and really quite low down at around 30%. And I want to be able to go in to the top edge of some of these cloud shapes and just add a little bit more of a highlight. In fact, let's turn the size of that brush down even more. So down into the 2% and some nice highlights. And we can do this in a really controlled way. Follow the shapes that have already been created for us. We don't really need to be inventing those shapes. The Rainforest brush has done a really nice job of creating that pillowy, soft cloud shape, which is perfect. I'm just going in and I'm adding some highlights along the very top. And that doesn't mean that I can't add some extra things that are just fragmenting off, but I'm going to largely speaking, just stick to the shapes that the brush has actually created for us. I'm just creating highlights along the, the top edges predominantly. I'm going to put it up again to about four. And then I can just do a couple of taps in there as well. I'm still roughly speaking near the top edge, but I don't want the highlight to just be a thin line. I want whole sections of the cloud in softer shapes to be quite nicely highlighted as well. We can allow just a couple of softer shapes just to fragment off as well. I'm going to keep these clouds quite quite soft in their general nature. I'm just going around some of these edges, just tapping in lightly. Just It just softens in some of the harsh edges that perhaps we've gone over a little bit too much. Still with the soft brush at 4% size, perhaps just maybe a touch less again. 3%, lower on the opacity at 20. And I'm just going to bring in some shapes now. I'm going to create a sense that there's some perspective on this so I want it coming in almost like an angle so we're going to have the the center point where the tree is but I want some clouds almost kind of radiating from that area so I'm just adding some taps I'm going to move it around so it, it is fragmented then leave a gap and then bring it back in again and again bringing it into the center area and I can do the same here again bringing it down generally as a line it comes down to this area perhaps here perhaps up here a little bit too. Extend some of these off. So I'll just put it up 7% if we want any larger pieces. Again, we're going to do a tree covering much of this up. Back down again, 3%. Bring some of these shapes together and allow sort of clumps of this to build together too. Okay, so that's generally creating a bit of a, an arc there. That when we add the tree, it's going to feel like the cloud, somehow the perspective is, is drawing us in to look at the center. Perhaps I'll just go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in a hint more to about the 5%. I think that will do for the sky for now. So we're going to create a layer on top, layer 6. I'm going to go to our colors. I'm going to choose the first color on the middle row. I'm going to use the medium brush within airbrushing. I'm going to put the brush size not too huge, but about 3%, and we'll have it maybe at around 90% opacity. Now, firstly, I'm just gonna decide where I want the top of the tree to be. I want it to be up here, and I want the base. So for this floating island, the, the base that it's sat on, I'm going to do a little bit of a, not quite an ellipse, because it's got corners, but something like that, and then I'm going to have it coming down to about here. Now, I don't have any problem with just filling that in initially, can even just drag flood fill just to speed it up a bit and it inevitably will come with little gaps and anomalies it isn't really a problem i'm happy for it to be very rough at this stage i'm going to turn the size of the brush down to two percent and the opacity down to somewhere closer to 70 and then i'm just going to bring some shapes down perhaps i'll even swap brush to the hard brush within airbrushing actually which means i need to change these sizes so i'm going to have it on two percent and we said about 70, didn't we? So let's put it down to 70. And I'm gonna have some structures, some angled 
some angled rocks that are here at the base of this shape. So I just want to create some jagged kind of shapes that could possibly be the bottom of rocks. Initially, I'm just focused on creating the bottom edge. So do whatever it is that you feel happy with in terms of rock shapes and textures, make it more angled. We're not got any detail on it yet. We're just creating a silhouette. So it's just a kind of jagged bottom with blocks and shapes that make up that shape. Okay, I'm gonna move from this color to a slightly lighter color, which is the second color. I'm gonna zoom in a touch. I'm gonna put it maybe lower down on the 2%, 70% opacity still. And we're gonna give some form, some articulation to some of these blocks, some of these stones, that we can just continue to create some angular shapes in this area. So we've already got the darkest color and I'll zoom in a touch more. So we're just creating a series of angles now that kind of fit within that. And we still want to leave some of the dark color peeking through. I'm just randomly doing sort of squares and multi straight lined shapes in this area. And I can do that over here too. And they can collide. They don't all have to be neatly separated. They can fuse together. They can bump into each other. That's not a problem. I don't mind if it extends up a little bit too beyond that initial curve that we created. I'm not really deciding anything yet. I'm just getting the initial kind of separation of different forms in there. I might just take that, angle it up a little bit over here. I mean, we could have another rock that sticks up over on this side too. Probably gonna need to create another layer at this point. Go back to my colors, got a third color, which I'm gonna have to turn the opacity severely down, about the 15%. Keep it around the 2%. And again, within some of these shapes, we can just start to make smaller shapes and so maybe even lower on the 2%, the lowest part of 2%, zoom in a touch more. Within some of these shapes, we're creating even smaller angular shapes. And I wouldn't especially worry about making it too refined at this stage. We just do angled triangles and things that fit into these areas. Doesn't need to be overly considered. But importantly, we're going to leave some of the dark color that we've already put in there showing through and even the second color that we've added in there as well. So we don't want to completely obscure the things that we've just done, but we're adding even more shapes that are intermingled. And it can go across some of those boundaries that we've already set up. And it can, in fact, color in large sections, some of those shapes, but we do need to have some of the original colors showing through in places at least. Might not be many, but at least some. So if you zoom back out, it's already getting a nice rock sort of textures. And if you want to just fuse some of them together a little bit more, you can just you can just scribble over larger areas. It isn't really a problem. We want to reduce that sense of being fragmented just a touch. So if there are little gaps showing through now, it's going to be more like cracks, the recesses, crevices within the rock structure. So for the most part, we can start fusing some of it together a little bit more. Maybe start building in some more shapes higher up. Now, I hope you can appreciate that this is not particularly labored over. This is not a massively difficult technique. I think as you do this and you start to put them together, I think you'll start to see things kind of suggest themselves to you a little bit more. That was recommend you keep it quite easy quite rough initially and then just zoom out have a look at it see how it's looking what is it suggesting to you in terms of the shapes and letting them just form a little bit more accidentally i think and just really looking at what what you've done probably mostly by accident in some ways and then using that as a starting point when you start adding some more highlights in a moment so you can see with or without that layer now, you can see the impact that it's had. Probably going to merge those two layers together. So I'm going to tap on the top one, merge it down. Now it's all in one layer. I'll create a layer above that. Go back to the colors. We've got an even greener color here. And then perhaps zoom in a touch. Still with the same hard brush. Let's just turn it down a touch maybe. Really the lowest part just before it comes 1%. Still at the 15% opacity. And perhaps now we can start breaking this into even smaller fragments. Again, keeping them quite angular. And importantly, I'm gonna let them really come down to this bottom section now. 
because we're going to have water and the water will reflect back light. In fact, let's go to that layer, tap on it, put on clipping mask, and now it's linked to the layer underneath, which means if I put it on even a 100% opacity, I can only add it. It's a bit difficult to gauge because it's a, a light background, but it will only add things on the inside of the forms we've already created. So we don't need to worry around the edge at all, but we don't want it 100%, we still want it low, maybe a touch higher, 20%, zoom in, and we can really take away some of these we can really take away some of these darker colors at the bottom, not necessarily every one, but the water is going to reflect back a lot of light. It's going to change the colors and add more green. But again, I'm not really taking a huge amount of care on this. I'm taking note of some of the shapes that we've got. So we've got a bit of an angled rock here. Perhaps I'll just add it to the bottom section, a little bit up here, but then maybe not near the top. Again, another shape here, add it to this section. Maybe it just stops here because it, it changes angle. It's easy to add too much in this color, but I don't think we've done that yet. So I'll just go along the bottom edge, continue to add some of these. They could be small shapes, they can be larger shapes too. We're just chipping away at some of the darker tones here at the bottom. I suppose we could go also to the soft brush with an airbrushing, put it up. 5% size, also 20% opacity, and just generally lighten up with a slightly softer, hazier look. Just generally lighten up my bottom area too. We've done some specifics, but we could also do it just generally with a bit of a haze. And we're already creating a really nice effect, I think. Let's go back to the hard brush again. Same settings that we had before, it doesn't change. If you switch out of it to a different brush and then come back, then it remembers everything you've done, which is really handy. Remember, we've got clipping mask on, so we can't go straight from the edges, which is really useful. Okay, I'll come back to that in a little while. But we're going to create a new layer, tap on the layer, and put on the clipping mask again. Go back to my colors, and we've got this light color, which is fifth in from the left on the middle row. Now, I'm going to have some lights that's coming into the scene, predominantly from over here, and it will creep around onto some of the rock surface. Now I'm going to make some of the rocks higher in places too, but just thinking about what we've already got, I could imagine light hitting the side of some of the shapes here. Now I might need to put the opacity up a little bit, maybe as far as 40. Still at 2%, I want to be reasonably precise with this, but I, this is the bit where it needs a little bit more care. So I'm imagining like a top surface of this rock that catches the light, but then it has a straight edge and then immediately on this side of it is facing away from the light so it, it has a shadow side. And another rock up here. I can almost see a suggestion of a top surface anyway. I can just lean into that. And then it very quickly starts to suggest some real forms, some very angular rock-like structures. I wouldn't say it's particularly difficult to do this. It just requires you to zoom out, have a look, See where you're at with it. Keep building it. Zoom out. Let's have a look. See the impact that that's had. This back edge certainly is likely to collect more of the light. Let's add some more of the highlights here. And again, we've got clipping mask on. We don't need to worry about being neat near the edges at all. We're going to do more angular shapes over on this side. I mean, just that little detail, you can start to see the effect that it gives. Now I'm not going to extend the light into the bottom section. The light's going from the top, so it will hit the top. But then as we get underneath here, it won't have that color as a re reflected light, but it will have the, the water reflecting more of a green color. But we can continue in this top area, add some more angular shapes. Some smaller ones just added to the mix is going to be important as well. Maybe you could have it kind of broken into aspects here. So we've got one rock, but pieces of it face the light and then pieces of it are just angled away a little bit more. And we could just have a variety of different levels and surfaces, even on that very top shape. But you can experiment a little bit. I don't think there's a right and wrong. It's going to be impossible for you to copy my exact shapes anyway because if you've really just been quite loose and quite rough, 
with the rock shapes, just creating angles, then your angles and your shapes will be vastly different than mine anyway. And that's all for the good, that's all to the better, I think. So I'm just creating just a few of the highlights here and that's where they stop and then they go underneath and then we don't get any of that top highlight in this section. Obviously not over here, because we're on the opposite side, apart from just the occasional last bit still picking it up, just in this area, but not much. Now we might add more rocks a little bit further in, but we're at the stage now probably where we need to start adding the tree. So we're going to go to our layers, add another layer, layer 9. Zoom back out. This time I'm going to go to the inking, studio pen. Doesn't need resetting, it's just the default settings. I'm going to go to the colours again, and we're going to use the colour, first colour. I'm going to go to the bottom row, we're going to use this first colour which is going to appear quite a bit darker. So we're using the studio pen. We're going to set the size pretty big, 100% and 100% opacity, which can get not massive, but it's, it's pretty big. So we might need to reduce the size of that when we come to some of the branches. I'm initially going to put the center of the tree, pick an angle that you want to grow or have the tree grow at. Just get that in place first. Imagining an angle like that pretty much, rather than just going straight up. Then I'm going to just have some tree roots, some quite angular tree roots that come from that point, splinter off, very similar to actual tree branches at the bottom. And it's going to be clinging to this very small floating island. So I've just got some shapes in there initially. They're going to be obscured when they come down to this point anyway, so I'm not too worried about those. I'm going to turn it, dial it back down from the 100, about 50. And then when we get up to this area, we're instantly going to have some branches and it's pressure sensitive, so you can release the pressure and the branch will get thinner. But you need to have these branches branching off, as it were. And as it gets closer to the tree, we want those branches to be getting thicker, more substantial again. Now, we've not got a lot of room. I did say I wanted the tree to be somewhere up here. So we could always go to the transform if you feel like you've gone too much. Go onto the free form. Reduce it back down, pinch it in if you need to, reposition it, find wherever it is working and still kind of contained in that area. I feel that this area, is, this section of the picture is about right. I just need to make the tree a bit squatter. I'm going to have another thick branch twisting off this way and then just release the pressure for a finer branch. Maybe start with a fine branch, wiggle it, allow it to create corners and angles and then press on more as it comes closer in but then just smooth it back out so that it's more of a gradual thickening or thinning really light pressure if you're quite heavy-handed and you can't do the real light pressure then you could always turn the brush size even lower half of that 25 percent or so and that way you can just afford to press on a little bit more and not worry too much now a lot of this is going to be covered by foliage anyway so i'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on these branches but just some of the more substantial ones I'm going to put in there to begin with and then if there are any gaps that remain I can always go back in add some more branches that isn't an issue but I think it's useful just to have some that you can articulate really right at the start now whether you keep it quite angular or quite curvy is up to you that was obviously going to determine the kind of the character of the tree a little bit. I like to have some angular shapes, but not too many. Otherwise, it's going to look like a really sinister, more gnarly tree. Uh, I'm going to leave the branches at that point. Like I say, I may add some more later. I'm going to go back to the transform freeform. I'm just going to pinch it in slightly. I do feel like I want it to go a little bit beyond the edges of the floating island, but not hugely. Maybe I can push it more that way. I recenter it a little bit. Zoom in. I'm going to put on the alpha lock on that layer. So tap on it, alpha lock, and you know it's engaged because you have a little checkerboard. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to skip the darkest color. I'm going to go for the next color, which is the third one. I'm going to zoom in and we're going to switch back to the airbrushing. Well, we'll try the medium brush actually for this. I'm just a, a touch softer than we were doing. So I want this down at the lowest part of 2% and about 70% opacity. And now we just need to be guided by some of the shapes that we've created. So we're creating, or rather articulating, some of the branches and 
the path that they are moving on. So I'm going to zoom in a touch more, maybe even reduce it further into the 1%. Now, if I bring this shape over here and then another line here and just follow some of the shapes that we've got, maybe a line here, but maybe I kind of have this cutting in front of that and then steering over this way. I hope you can see the difference there between the color I'm adding and the, the darker background. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but I'm basically adding some more highlighted areas whilst at the same time leaving some of the dark colors behind. So that creates a sense that we've got deeper recesses and deeper parts of the tree. It's almost like a tree texture. And then we can just let them overlap and collide. It doesn't need to be overly neat. But there's just going to be some separation of some of the shapes in places. And we've got alpha lock on, so we don't need to be overly obsessed with being neat. Maybe just follow the line of some of the, the roots. Because some of them are going to cut in front of others. So you need to make those decisions. So I'm going to go to the next color, which is the fourth color. Stay on the same layer and it's significantly lighter. So perhaps I need to turn it down to about the 50. Keep it on the 1% and especially around that edge, this side of the tree is going to be slightly cooler. We're going to have the dappled light hitting this side, just like we do on the stone. But on this side, we don't really have any of that. But what we will get is this blue color coming through and just picking up some of the shapes and some of the edges on that branch. I'll zoom in a touch more so you can really see what I'm doing. And I'm just following the shapes. I'm allowing gaps to remain. And then I'll start another one here. Bring it down. And when you zoom out, you can really start to see the effect of that. Bring this in to so this area a little bit. Now it's not going to completely take over that previous color, but in some areas it, it will overlap it quite a lot. So once we get kind of about around the center point of the tree, I'm maybe going to switch color and try a different approach. So I'll turn that up and just for the ones over on this side, I'll just go over there. We've got alpha lock on, so we're just lightening up those tree branches in places so that they'll blend into their environment a bit much there. We don't want it to be so light that it disappears. We'll just go over a touch. Just back some of these as well. Okay, so we're going to go along our colors. We're going to go for the fifth color which is significantly more powerful and light. So we need to turn that down to about the 15% again. Still on the same brush, we're gonna put it at 1% within the medium brush, airbrushing. And if I start to add on this side, similar to what we did then, especially along this edge, we're just adding a warmer side to the tree. Now it can go onto some of the blue areas too, and it can kind of merge together in some areas. Generally speaking, I just want to create some lines that run the extent of the tree and give it a little bit of character. But I don't want this to be pressed on too many times or to be too light because we still want to be able with the next light colors to really show some dappled colors coming through that really represent the, the most extreme highlights. But over here, for example, it's leaning away, coming over at this side. so you're going to see more and more of this color coming in. Okay, I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer. I'm going to put it underneath tree layer like this. And just by default is put the clipping mask off on. So I want to deselect it. I want to be able to do things behind the tree branches. I'm going to go to the rainforest brush. Now I've just reset it so that our textures and shapes are much closer together now and better suited for the foliage. I'm going to use this color at the very end of the bottom row and I'm going to put the brush size down to 2% and about 90% opacity. And I'm going to start just putting in foliage that is peeking through behind some of these branches. Possibly put it down to 2%, especially as we get higher up. These are going to be representing the foliage that is, is more distant and some of it will peek through, but most of it probably won't. But there's no harm in using this as a way of just defining the top edge. Zoom back out, just have a look at the overall canvas. How far do we want to take it up? We definitely want to leave some gaps but I want to fill in 
big areas too. So I'm just using a circular motion in some areas. I want to take it all the way to the end of the branches. I don't want the branches sticking out on their own. I want them to contain foliage. So we can get my whole tree element. I do feel like it's a little bit large. As I was saying before, I think the more you add to this, the more you start to see that. So I'm going to reduce the scale of this. It's on free form. I'm also going to move it that way a little bit. And I'm going to go back to the tree, which is at the top. I'm going to move that accordingly over here too. And I feel like that's a little bit better balanced, but we may adjust it as we go along. Back to layer 10. And then I'm just going to add some distant foliage over here as well. I may need to add a couple more branches to explain how we've managed to get foliage over, over here on its own. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to put on alpha lock and I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to go for the second from the right, green. I'm going to put this super low down because it needs to be very subtle. I'm going to put it at 5% and I'm going to keep it at the 2% size and I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to start dappling in some of this color now to some areas initially. Even for this background layer. Now we're going to add another layer on top and then ramp this up even more, but there's no harm in starting to add some of this texture, some of the variety of hues in there straight away. I'm going to go to the top layer and create another layer, layer 11. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to use this dark green, which is third in from the right on the middle row. I'm going to stay with the rainforest brush, 2% size, and I'm going to put it up to about 40% opacity. And then I'm going to use this now to start bringing in lots of foliage. In fact, we'll put it even higher. We'll put it up to 70. And this is now going to form the foreground foliage that's going to cover up really the majority of the kind of tree branches anyway. So we can have big clumps. So we're still at the 2% size, which is plenty big enough. And I'm going to allow it just to fill in, cover over some of those upper areas that we've already created. But this darker, warmer green, even though it's darker, it is warmer, is really going to push forward and create that 3D effect. Especially when we start adding highlights to it. But I want to obscure, cover over some of these branches, many of the branches, and it's going to help the effect. There'll be some bits that show through, gaps, but there'll be some areas where we're just creating big areas that just cover up everything that was visible before. Go to that layer, put on alpha lock. Then we're going to move along to the next screen, which is second in from the right. It is really vibrant, if I show you that here. So we need to just subdue it somewhat. So we'll put it down to about 50. And then we probably need to amend the brush slightly. Tap on the brush, go to spacing. We'll put it to about 40%. Then we can zoom in, lowest part 2%. And we'll start at the top. We're just going to begin chipping away, certainly at that top edge all the highlights are going to start creeping in really quite strongly at that top part. So we'll start from there. Bear in mind where the light is coming from. So it's still coming from this side to so perhaps just prioritize this top edge. We have ha added a layer. Perhaps it doesn't quite meet the layer that was underneath it, this one. And that's fine. We can go back in later on and erase some of that subdued color if we need to. Or we can go back to that layer and we can do exactly the same thing on that layer too. And that just brings it up to the same level of vibrant green along that top edge. So we've got a couple of different ways that we can fix that. Go back to the top layer and we'll just continue to add some of these highlights in to begin with. I'm even going to put the saturation down or rather the strength down opacity down to 30% because I definitely want some subdued extra textures coming in there, not just the boldest of highlights. And we don't want these textures to be too diffused. We want to maintain some bold edges and shapes and then really nice areas perhaps where we have more of a shadow and separation. But you'll start to see as I add more of this.
So there's some clumps here that are sticking out, but I want them to be kind of in the shadow. So I'm going to lightly touch on those, but I don't want to add any really vibrant highlights. But then in this other section, I'm going to go over it a bit more. I mean, I haven't even touched the lightest of greens yet. So I'm going to go back that layer 10 and there'll be some distant areas here. I'm also going to catch the light. Go over them. And already it's starting to create a really nice kind of 3D effect, which is exactly what we're looking for. Go back up to the top layer and let's continue. I'm just going to further ramp up some of these top edges and I want a nice clump here. So perhaps I can just help further define that. But even within a clump, we want to create some extra fragments of highlight too. So we could turn it down to the 1%. So for example, in this area, we've got a bit of a splintering off. We've got a couple of smaller shapes. So it's not just one neat line that goes all the way. Top it across the edge could be broken into smaller pieces too. I'm going to move to the brightest of colors and we're going to continue the same thing but obviously it's significantly brighter so we just need to build it up gradually and again we've only got it on the 30 percent opacity so that we can just be mindful we're still on the top layer and the brush is doing a lot of the work for us naturally it's a rainforest brush so it really helps with the right kind of textures Definitely needs us to guide where to put them, but it makes much lighter work of creating this effect, which is brilliant. I'm allowing this to keep ramping up. Definitely want it to be zingy. Just like we've got a really intense light hitting there, we need to have that reflected here. So there's a strong sunlight because we've got a super big contrast. We've got the brightest colors and then a more subdued side. So the foliage needs to have that too. If it was all quite muted and didn't have much of a contrast, then it wouldn't match the environment that we've already suggested in the stones. So we definitely need some strong highlights. And again, we probably need to go back to layer 10, create some of them on the very top. There's some pushing there into the background and just kind of blurs the line between what's background highlight and what's foreground highlight. I'm not really going to do too much into this area. I don't think much light is going to creep through there. Maybe just a bit of an outcrop over here. It's going to catch the light just coming in over the top and just bouncing in this area just a touch, but not too much back to the top layer. And there's more of that, so we can definitely affect that more strongly. Perhaps we'll even put it up to 50% if we dare. Lower on the 1%. And we're just going to be a little bit more controlled zoom in a touch and with this now we're just we're really being specific where we want the strongest highlights to be i'd say you don't need to do a ton of this it goes quite a long way now i was doing a tree design on the last tutorial and we were trying to use the Aurora brush for this purpose for creating kind of foliage and it. This is a much easier brush to use, it has to be said. I'm going to put it up to 80, we're really pushing the limits of it. Yeah, it's a fantastic brush. Good for things other than just foliage as it happens. I've used it in this same tutorial for clouds. But yeah, surprisingly versatile, really. So I'm going to go back to the tree and we've got some dark colors in there still. So I'm going to go with the airbrushing soft brush, go back to my colors. I'm going to use this third color, zoom in there a little bit, 3% size, 20% opacity. I'm just going to subdue some of these branches that are in there. Maybe I'll put it higher, 50% opacity. Going to just knot them back a little bit more. Still very dark in there. Perhaps we could even go a bit lighter. Let's choose an even lighter one. I think this second color on the top row, or the middle row rather, is lighter still. We could use some of that. 
Yeah, I think that's starting to help. Back some of these branches. If they look a little bit too dark, we can just use that to subdue them. It might be that some of the branches just need fading in and disappearing a little bit. So we could even go back in with the eraser, soft brush, 3% size, 100% opacity. Let's just remove some of these branches. I'm just going to go back to my colors and we've got that really vibrant green color disc. I'm going to push it even further. So I'm going to add it to my color palette now, but it will always have been there in the codes and the download if you've downloaded it. But I'm just adding it mid tutorial and I think that we need a brighter color. So I'm going to put it up to 40%, 1% opacity on the top layer. And I feel like, well, let's even be even bolder. Let's put it up to 60 and I feel like we could benefit from an even brighter color there in the mix amongst that super vibrant green. Zoom back out. Yeah, I think that's lifting it even more. That's great. And we'll go back to layer 10 just to make sure that top edge doesn't look more subdued and cool than it should. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the general color scheme of that now. But so we're going to go to the top layer and create a new layer on top of that. I'm going to zoom in, go back to my colors. I'm going to use the dark green. So that's now fourth in from the right. So I'm going to put this dark green up to 80%. Top end of 1% and we can start adding some green things, some greenery in between the rocks, the tree, roots. We can add it into the mix. Quite dark in places, but I'm gonna, just like I did with the tree, lighten it up significantly over at this side. Let's go in with the third from the right now. 1% size, 80% opacity, and we can start doing that. We can start just bringing in this really nice vibrant green. I might even create a layer behind the tree, so the tree's on that one. Go to layer 10, create a layer above that, but underneath layer 9. So we've got 13 underneath layer 9, and if we're on 13, we can just have some of this greenery poking around at the side of the tree. We don't really have to worry about being neat. But then we can add it on top by going back up to layer 12 up there. We want it to cover up. Maybe have some of this greenery spilling out over the edge. Why not? I feel like we're missing a couple of rocks here. We can go back in in a moment and just add some more rocks. Zoom back out, check the overall effect, go back second from the right, even more vibrant. Perhaps we should put on the alpha lock. Now we don't need to worry too much. Go along the top edge. We're still on the 1%, perhaps just even a hint lower. We can just sort of kiss the top edge of some of the greens that we've already laid down. So again, we're following the same principle. We've got strong highlights on the rocks. Therefore, strong highlights are going to hit the green areas. I think I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to go back in with the airbrushing medium hard brush. I'm going to go to my colors. Now I've got a couple of colors here that I plan to use for the tree. So I've got that color, which we have used subtly there. So I'm going to go for the next one, which is third in from the right. Beg your pardon, it's fourth in. There is a dark color there. So fourth in from the right. 1% size, 25% opacity, and I'm going to zoom in. And I want some areas of this tree to have like a dappled light. So bits of the sunlight that's crept through, just like it highlights the ground and the rocks and the grass. I want bits of this tree to be highlighted too. I might even turn that up higher. So 40%, we're just going to pick up on bits of this tree where the light has just managed to escape through. And it's really going to start bringing the, the center light into our scene even better. So perhaps these lower trunk roots are going to have more of that color on because they're going to be more open. Less in the shadow. And as we get further up here, we're just going to get bits where the light comes through, but not too much. So we've got a nice section here. 
Perhaps it can extend all the way over here. And then lower down here as well. I'm going to go to the even brighter colour. So the third of those warmer tones. Zoom in a touch, perhaps just even further down. Really small on the 1%. Still at the 40% strength. Within these areas now we can just really add some intense highlights now. So just be some hints and branches. We'll go back a colour, middle of those warm tones again. Just bring it into some of the branch areas a little bit more, but not too much. I think just a hint of it here and there can go a long way. Okay, I'm going to go back to the tree layer, which was layer 9. I'm going to tap on it and turn off alpha lock. Perhaps I'll go in with the airbrushing hard brush. Back to my colours. Now initially we used this colour, first colour on the bottom row. I'm just going to use that at 2% size and well 90% opacity. Just to bring in some of these tree roots a little bit more. Just needs balancing out a little bit. I'm going to go back to layer 8. I'm going to turn off the clipping mask because I want to be able to be adding stone details in there quite freely. I'm going to go back to my colours. I'm going to use the fifth colour from the left and the middle row. And I just want a few rock details, some angular things to be creeping in to this area too. Perhaps a little bit fierce at 90%. Let's turn it down. 40% is plenty strong enough. I've got quite a, a strong highlight in there, so I'll just tone that back. And a couple more rock details in there. I think that makes sense. I think I'd like to add just creeping around a little bit more. Let's also go back to these colours, perhaps the third, perhaps the second of those warm colours on the bottom row. Zoom in a touch. Can add some of these in the mix and some of these stones too. Just for some subtler details, we've got a very strong highlight there, but we can have some subtler tones as well. And I think the overall rocks area is working pretty well. Back to layer 12 where we have the greenery. I'm going to go for the brightest of colours. I'm going to probably stay on the hard brush this time. I don't feel like I need to add any more texture, so I'm going to keep it at the 1%, uh, 2%, 40% opacity. And perhaps I'll just add a couple of stronger highlights in the greenery, just in areas. Just to really brighten it up, give it a kind of zing, and make it pop a little bit more. I think that works. I'm going to go back to layer 10. I'm going to turn off the alpha lock and then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur it in slightly. I want it to be pushed slightly further back. I don't want to blur it too much. 4% is a bit too strong, but when it's nothing, it looks the textures look as sharp as everything. So I think about 3% works. Just pushes them a little bit further away. I might even on that layer go in with the eraser set to the soft brush. 3% size, about 30% strength, and I can consider just knocking some of these back a little bit, just subduing them slightly, can actually just push them away again. Well, some areas are creeping through and you can see them, but just ever so slightly softening them back with the eraser can actually work really nicely too. Pushes them further back. We're just going to increase that sense of distance. I think what I'd like to do is take all the tree elements, merge them together. So that includes layer 14. So I'm going to merge that down. Layer 12, merge it down. Layer 11 now, merge it down. Layer 9, merge it down. And layer 13, merge it down. And now we've got pretty much the whole tree, all of those details on one layer. Now, at this stage, if, if you're not quite happy, if it doesn't look balanced to you, then you can always just now, all the tree details are on one layer. We can go to the transform, we can go to the distort, and we can find wherever we're happiest with it, we can just move it around. 
we don't need to stick with the original placement and feel of it we can pinch it in at the top and push it that way and push it up whatever it is that works best for the balance of your picture shouldn't really change very much else in the picture in order to do that i think i might just pinch it in a little bit more on the free form as well so i'm happy with that overall i think the balance of that works better i think i'd like to go in again just with the organic rainforest brush on this yellow on the end yellowy green one percent size 80 percent opacity let's just really add some strong highlights along the top edge here and there Okay, I'm going to consider now flattening some of the rock layers. So on layer 8, we had the highlights. So I'm going to merge that down. Now I've got layer 7. I'm going to merge that down. Layer 6 and layer 10. I'm going to merge together as well. So now we've got all of the island and the tree details merged together. And I'm going to take that layer and duplicate it, which I quite like what it did to the background. I don't know quite what it's done but I like that so I'm going to merge that down again I'm going to slide and duplicate it again however and then on the bottom version I'm going to go to the transform flip it vertically and I'm going to move it down so that we're starting to make the reflection in the water I need to just have it lined up so it's just touching itself and the reflection like so like that now I'm also going to with that version go to the adjustments Gaussian blur in fact we'll change to the motion blur just go it sideways just a touch like so we'll then go on that layer tap on it and put on alpha lock and we can go back to it with the adjustments gaussian blur we can blur it even more but we won't lose the outer edge now that we've done that so i'm going to gaussian blur it into about five percent but we've kept the position and the outline really importantly we've still got the alpha lock on so i'm going to go to the airbrushing soft brush Back to my colors i'm going to choose this color which is sixth in from the left on the middle row with the soft airbrush i'm going to put it to 10 percent size 20 percent opacity and then i'm just going to start adding this onto that reflection like so then i'm going to switch this dark blue fourth on the top row and we're going to just have a little bit of that down at the bottom here then i'm going to go to that layer and turn off the alpha lock i'm going to go to the smudge tool put it on the medium hard brush with an airbrushing two percent size 100 percent opacity and i'm just going to push at the edges a little bit in places left and right don't need to do too much of that however just a little bit go to our soft brush in fact we'll go for the medium brush with an airbrushing one percent size 40 percent opacity and I'm just going to go to the local area, grab it there, and I'm just going to extend a few dashes across. And again, we can do this over at this side. I don't want them to be too long, I want them to be a little bit fragmented. And grab it from the local area down here too. Perhaps I'll turn it up 2%. Go to the layers, create another layer, and I'll do more of that, but this time we're going to use the motion blur next. So just a few dashes, I don't want to do too many in fact. Just a, a couple of outliers. It's too big a dash. We can allow it to extend across the reflection a little bit here and there too. And well, I'm going to go back to my colors, I'm going to use this green the first vibrant green and maybe just a few hints of something on there maybe even the next green and then i'm going to go to the adjustments motion blur slide it across slightly about the 20 percent in fact i feel like we need some lighter areas up there at the bottom so i'm going to go to layer two create a layer above that go to our colors in this white in with the soft brush and airbrushing 8% size, 20% opacity. And I'm just going to run that across. I want this to be like a, a low-lying mist there, perhaps, in the distance. 
I think it's just going to bring it together somewhat. I can allow it to just merge up to where the low clouds are as well, and then a little bit lower down here. Perhaps I'll just go to the very top layer. Perhaps I'll go for the second color on the middle row. Soft brush with an airbrushing, 1% size, up 70% opacity. And I'll just have some things growing down from here, maybe. Organic things that almost want to come and meet the water. Don't need to do it all over, just one or two places is enough, I think. Just go in, tidy up some of these edges, create a couple more anomalies if you feel that it would benefit from it. You can even have a couple back there. And with the same colour, perhaps I'll just go in and we'll add a couple of birds in there as well. Back to the first cloud layer, layer three. If I don't know, we'll go to layer five. Back in with the white, soft brush, and 30% size. And yeah, I think I just like to add a hint more with the clouds here at the top. Now we know exactly where the tree stops at the top. I'm just going to add a couple more clouds in there. Okay, I'm going to leave this painting here at this point. Hope you've enjoyed following along. If you like this and you like stranger kind of landscapes, well then I did a landscape in a jar quite recently that you might really want to have a go at too. I really enjoyed doing it and I think you would as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to catch you back here soon. Bye for now.